Hi Vogue, I'm Cindy Crawford and today we're going to go through my life and looks. Okay, here we go. This was actually my publicity headshot for when I did House of Style. You know, it's funny, when I started doing House of Style, no stylist. I think the very first time we shot, I brought my own Azadine Alaya dress and my own leather jacket, which this was my leather jacket, obviously paired with a white t-shirt here. I mean, so classic. A white t-shirt and a leather jacket and big hair. See, we're starting off strong. Some of the greatest things about House of Style was just like the wacky situations, like showing Naomi Campbell putting on pimple cream and that, hey, supermodels get pimples too, you know? That kind of thing made it much more approachable. Vogue, this is not my first Vogue cover. I've been very fortunate, I've had a few. This is the new Vogue. Anna Winter came to Vogue and she was all about like, what is the new Vogue? And I think this cover really kind of shows that. It's outside, it's not like one of those super close up headshots that Avedon was famous for. The hair is up and I do have to say, I don't do a lot of covers with my hair up. I feel like Cindy Crawford's always like, the hair's blowing or it's big hair, or whatever. I remember my first shoot for Vogue was with Wayne Mazur and Carlene Cerf. It was a swimsuit story in St. Bart's. From that shoot, I was invited to shoot with Avedon and I went there and ended up getting the cover and I remember it was like this pink suit, it was very happy. I was in Europe when it came out and I was passing through the airport and I stopped to buy, well I bought three. And I just so wanted the woman at the counter to look at the magazine and realize it was me and she didn't of course and she's like, do you know you have three of the same magazines honey? And that was it. Well, this is just, um, what do they call that, model off duty? That wasn't a thing, again. This was just me probably not being very chic. I have like a plastic shopping bag, my big bottle of Evian, and we lived in our 501s. I'm sure that jacket is Azadine, and that was one of the cool things about working with Azadine Alaya was that you got to go down and get clothes. I mean, you pretty much got paid in clothes, and I always felt like my clothes end up in a little pile on the floor wherever I'm shooting, so I didn't, I didn't wear like precious things. I mean, it might be Azadine, but it was a leather coat that I wore every day. It is funny that I do see pictures like this pop up on Instagram all the time or on Pinterest, you know, like a style inspo because again, like no one put this together other than like what I grabbed. So it's, it's funny because it wasn't like styled in any way. Ah, uh, I love this. This was my red Versace dress it was for the Academy Awards, I was with my ex-husband. The red carpet thing was not such a big deal. I did not have a stylist. I had just been in Milan doing shows and there was this dress in black that someone was wearing. You know, I just called Donatella or whoever and was like, could you guys make me this dress in red for the Oscars? And they did. The black shoes, it's funny because it seemed right at the time. They seem a little heavy to me now. But the thing that was really sexy about this dress was the slit in the back. It came nearly like up to it came up very high. <laughs> you had to be very careful in this dress. A few years ago, Anna Winter asked for this dress for an auction that Vogue was doing. I still had it and I put it up for auction and I should have bought it back. I regret that I didn't. Someone has this dress now. I'm not that I would wear it again, but I think I miss it a little bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is probably my favorite fashion moment. I didn't do as many fashion shows as a lot of the, the other women that I would consider like in my group of models. A lot of times I would just do for Versace. This was in a Gianni Versace show. The four of us plus Tatiana had done a George Michael video that um, ended up being really, you know, played all the time on MTV. The show happened so Gianni had the song playing and the four of us come out together. I wrote about this in my book and I wrote that one plus one plus one plus one equaled more than four in this moment. It was like, something happened, it felt really special. It was like one of those moments where music and pop culture and fashion all came together in like a super magical way. You can just see the joy on all of our faces in this picture, like we're singing as we walk down the runway and we're just having fun and we're just like drinking in every moment of it. Oh, I love this shoot. This shoot is also Vogue, surprise, surprise. Helmut Newton in Monte Carlo. I loved working with Helmet. I mean, definitely Helmet had a style and you kind of knew what you were signing up for when you worked with Helmet Newton. He had a sense of humor about his photographs, you know, even some of the more sexualized ones. Like for instance, I would always say, Helmet, I'm never putting a saddle on, don't even ask me. He would like tell you a story as you were 
doing this picture, and I remember the story for this picture, which was he was like, you know, you were married to a very rich man, and he died, you know, so it's kind of like this widow, but you had a young lover. You know, he, he just kept adding to the story and hoping to catch like the tiniest change of expression, you know, to get that picture. And then, you know, whenever you do a picture like this with a piece of chiffon or tool or whatever it was, it's always like you have a hundred bad ones to get the one perfect one where everything's perfect. The leg's perfect, the arm's perfect, the tool's perfect. Once again, Versace. This was the VMAs, the MTV Awards, but this was when Versace did their, you know, famous bondage collection. I mean, what more can you say? It's amazing. What is interesting is I just glanced down and I saw the heels were probably three inches. And that was considered high at the time. I mean, we did not have to wear those insanely like five inch heels until much later. I thought that was a high heel at the time. And when you think back, that's like your work pump now. Working with Gianni and Donatella was just always like, it was family. I mean, they were family and they made you feel part of the family and it was always so much fun. And Gianni really celebrated the model in a new way, I think. Like, he also was partly responsible for what, like, the rise of the supermodel. It's funny because Kaya, for her 18th birthday, she asked them to make her a new version of this dress. Hers was shorter, but it's just funny that even for her, you know, and I think this was, you know, 30 years later, more that the style still resonated like that was her coming out party so it was kind of a way for her to be like okay i'm not a little girl anymore i'm wearing a versace bondage dress <laughs> when people dress as me for halloween they dress in this outfit this is my first pepsi commercial i did i'm wearing obviously a white bodysuit these were my own jeans that i wore to set that day we tried on a bunch of different things and finally they were like can we just cut you know, your jeans off and make cutoffs? I said yes, because I take one for the team. You know, this just became iconic because of everything. I mean, yes, the outfit, the hair, but I also got out of a really cool Lamborghini. They had great music. The greatest thing about this commercial was even though it was like super sexy in an all-American way, it was cute too, because there were two little boys that were watching me and at the end, they're like, is that a great looking Pepsi can or what? As if they weren't even noticing me, they were just looking at the Pepsi can. And I honestly don't think the commercial would have been near as impactful if it didn't have that little innocence and sense of humor. And next up, Steven Mizell is such an incredible teacher of modeling. He helps you understand how to move. And he used to have like this big mirror behind him when he was shooting and really loud music, but you could see yourself and you could go, oh wait, that doesn't look good. Or that does look good. Or that, oh, there's a wrinkle if I do that. That's what I think of when I think of Steven Mizell. This outside kind of more natural almost Vogue cover is I think a little bit different than most of the work that I've done with Steven, but I love it. I love the styling. Again, it's taking Chanel and making it like look like just like the cool girl next door would be wearing it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So even though I'm not an actress, I did a movie called Fair Game with Billy Baldwin. I played a lawyer, <laughs> which was a bit of a stretch. Actually, I got annoyed. One critique of me said as if she could be a lawyer and I thought that was so offensive because I thought I could have been a lawyer I just you know I was valedictorian I I did go to chemical engineering you know school at Northwestern but ended up you know getting into modeling but it was kind of let's say a little bit far-fetched. That is not me acting. That is actually me and actual terror as things are exploding behind me. I was outside of my comfort zone every single day. I learned a lot on that film and it was fun and I have made fr like lifelong friends, but it just wasn't my, my thing. <laughs> Okay, so this was 2018, Heavenly Bodies, Met Ball. It's funny because part of me was like, well, maybe I should go, I don't know, like try something different. I think, look, I love this dress. I felt great in this dress. It moved, it was comfortable. Again, Versace just fits me. I do sometimes feel like, oh, maybe I should be a little more of a risk taker with fashion. Like in this one, I could be at the Oscars. I could be anywhere. And I think sometimes I think, oh, maybe I should have, I don't know, put wings on or whatever. It was Heavenly Bodies. I don't know, but I love the dress. 
what's interesting about the Met Ball is sometimes someone will get invited, but they won't get invited with a plus one. I remember at that Met Ball, we, we ran into a few people. I think one, for instance, was Ansel Elgort. And he wasn't there with anybody, and we're like, okay, Ansel. Like, we're, we were like gathering like the, kind of like the singles or the strays around us, because it's very intimidating being there by yourself. And I guess maybe because I've been that person before, that if I see someone, I'll go up and you know try to to get them, you know, because that's it's a it's horrible to feel, in, you know, especially like that's a very powerful room. Oh, so this is when Kaya got a fashion award after you know her one year of modeling. She was so excited to be wearing a McQueen dress. In this, I was like, yes, I'm still Cindy Crawford, but tonight I want to be Kaya's mom. The last thing I wanted to do is look like I'm competing with my, you know, 17-year-old daughter. So I love this dress. This is Marquesa. It was elegant and chic, but not trying to be a showstopper, for sure. I mean, Kaya has, even when she was little, you know, well, we would play, she would always want to play dress up. And we'd go in my closet and she'd pick, you know, some like Dolce dress or some, Thing and I would pin it on her, and then I would do crazy hair and makeup, and then we would do like a photo shoot. And she would do it with her friends too, so it was really fun. So she definitely, um, it wasn't totally surprising to, to me that she wanted to get into modeling. I'm proud of Kaya just for who she is. I mean, modeling is just one small aspect of who she is. The best advice I give both my kids, not only about modeling, show up on time, be prepared, and stay off your phone. It's so easy now just to like sit there and scroll Instagram while you're getting your hair done or your makeup done, but I think those relationships that I made in the makeup chair or backstage or whatever, those added so much to my, my life. Thank you so much, Vogue, for letting me reminisce about my life and looks, and thanks all of you for watching.